She right here. I'm wondering, should I be calling this week's video Bittersweet Week Part 2? I'm just gonna skip over the sweet part, uh, my awesome perm with my friends in Ophelone, and fast forward to the bitter part um, of what happened yesterday on Wednesday. First, the facts. A bomb exploded at a bus stop opposite Binaneoma, the Jerusalem Convention Center, right outside the 74 bus. At least 38 people were injured, three of them very seriously. One of these three, a 56-year-old British tourist, was pronounced dead upon arrival to the hospital. Twelve of the injured are still in the hospital. No terrorist group is taking responsibility for the attack. Apparently what happened was that the man who works at the kiosk over there noticed a chafetz chashud, a suspicious object, a bag at the phone booth near the bus stop. He told people who were in the area to move away, and just as he was calling the police to report the chafetz chashud, the bomb exploded. This was at about 3 p.m. yesterday, Wednesday, March 23rd, 2011. Um, a girl in my class got a text message, I think from her mother, and then she announced it to the whole class. Needless to say, the teacher had, to, had no choice but to let us out early, and so everybody could call everyone they know to make sure that everyone was alive. As happens in situations like this, the phone lines were all tied up, so I couldn't get a line out. Couldn't make local calls, couldn't do international calls, nothing. Truth be told, I wasn't too worried that my parents would be worried about me. I mean, after seeing how long it took for Canada to release the news of the Fogel murders, I figured that they wouldn't hear about the terrorist attack for a while. I actually managed to get um, an internet connection on my cell phone, and I sent a quick email to my parents and my friends just to let them know that I was live. My father called me soon after I sent the email, and then my mother called me when she finished work. Um, now she's kind of freaking out a bit, and wants me back in Toronto, if not for permanent, at least for Pesach. Let me just put this whole situation into perspective for you a little bit. Bidinoma or more precisely, the bus stop, is about an eight and a half minute walk from my apartment. The 74 bus is my bus. The bus that I take all the time. The bus stop that was bombed is a bus stop that I'm at all the time. And how does that make you feel? And meanwhile, rockets are flying from Gaza into southern Israel, into Ashdod, into Ashkelon, into Steirut. I got this great email from one of my close friends in Toronto in it, of course, she expressed her concern for me and for everyone else here in Israel. Um, I hope she doesn't mind me quoting one of her, the things she said. Um, she said, I've watched every clip about the bombing and just want to be in Israel so badly and do something to help and be part of Yerushalayim again. You see, that's, that's exactly the crazy thing. That even when all this stuff is going on, and kind of especially after Pigua happened so close to home, it makes me love Israel that much more and be grateful and happy that that I live here right now. Oh, and then that night we put on our happy faces and traveled to B'nai Brak for a friends engagement party. Life goes on. <laughs> 